Today, I'm meeting Kim Zolziak for a reading. Better not be tardy. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, Teresa. How are you? You're look at how nice. good you look. Aw, thank you. I am Kim Zolciak Bierman, and this is my husband, Corey Bierman, and we are from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm originally from the Housewives of Atlanta, and then I got my own spinoff called Don't Be Tardy. I've played in the NFL for uh, the Atlanta Falcons for the past eight years, and I'm currently a free agent. You look gorgeous. Thank you. So do you. You're so Come fit on. in everything. I'm trying to stop the aging process. Well, then I better get to the gym. <laughs> I'm obsessed with Teresa, like obsessed. I would have traveled anywhere in this world to meet her, so I'm super excited. A little nervous, but really excited. Um, I am gonna just say this to you. There is a lot of energy in this room it's here today. It's crazy. There's a lot of energy. Woo. So I don't even know where to begin. There are at least 12 souls that are willing to channel today. So, um, are you afraid that someone's gonna come through? Mm -mm. There is also someone with the head injury as well, or something with the, with the head? Well, possibly. Well, I've I guess. had some friends pass. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's the main one that you're thinking about, is that correct, with the head? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was made to feel like that they, they wanted to take responsibility for their actions or choices. Okay. And, they're, and they're young, so that's my symbol for that they left the physical world before we feel their time. Casey was a really good friend of mine. We grew up in the same town, went to all grades of school together. It was a small town, 3,000 people, everybody knew everybody, and so your friends were a very close-knit group of friends. Casey was definitely a wild child. Um, he had a really goofy sense of humor, um, kind of a cowboy. You know, he, he rode horses and, and roped, and then he played football, and I mean, he just kind of was the, the average kid growing up in that area. Uh, do you know someone that died in a car accident? There was some type of ejection or someone was hit. Casey was ejected and, and that's how he died. We were young, we were young, you know, we were seniors in high school. We had three best friends. It was me, Casey, and Corey. We graduated and he died like a week later. He just said to me that you were left with a burden and or guilt that is, I should have been there. Maybe if I did this or I could have done that, it could have been a different result. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Could have been there. Yeah. He was at a little get together kind of outside of town and um, I was supposed to go but ended up not going. I feel a lot of guilt uh, for, for his situation. Um, you know, losing him and him not being around, it's hard to grasp that, you know, that person's, you know, gone. You're never going to talk to him again. You're never going to see him again. And so. It definitely did change my life. He says, I don't want you to feel that if you were there, that things could have or would have been different. What might have been different maybe would have been your burden. And it would have been far more greater if you were there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I know he wasn't supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. But your experience today is exactly why you're here. Mm -hmm. Was for that. Mm -hmm. Is your life always about everybody else? Every day. I feel like I'm looking at you, because this is your experience, and they're having me look everywhere yeah. else to give someone a reading. Mm -hmm. That's me. But it validates your, your personality. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and there's a sister here. So um, I want to talk about the, is there someone in there that understands that? Hello, over there. They're telling me they want me to talk about the young female. Oh, I know exactly. Nikki. Are you in there? My name is Nikki. I am Kim Zolciak's hairdresser for the last 14 years. We came with Kim so she could meet Teresa and have a reading and um, had no idea this was gonna happen today. They had me write sister. Um. My best friend died. Okay. She was like your sister. Yes. <sighs> she says, oh, wait. She talks very fast. She's like me. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'm like, I'm like, wait, I thought I talked fast. I'm like, I need to coffee up a little bit more. <laughs> she does. Yeah. She shows me that you never left her side. 
She shows me I'm at the bedside. I'm ho you're holding her hand. Yeah, I was there with her when she died. And so I can hear angels singing. So were you playing music when she died? We were playing. We were playing Josh Groban and those angel songs and angel, an angel CD. Yeah. I moved from Chicago to Atlanta in 95, and the first friend I made was Danielle. We worked together. We did everything together. She got married. I was in her wedding. She had a baby. I was there when he was born. She was a really cool person. And she says, I want to thank you for dropping everything, putting your life on the back burner for my son. Is her, is where, how do you connect with the mom? I'm now the her, mother, the mother of her, her son. children. Yeah. Perfect. Look, how does she know that? Because that's so crazy. So you understand putting your life on the back burner for her. Yeah. Yeah, she was sick for three years. She shows me that you never <sighs> left her side. And you told her time and time again mm -hmm. that you would take care of everything. It's been 13 years since Danielle has passed away from stage four melanoma. She was told that she was probably not gonna live a year after this, after we found out that she had, you know, stage four. And she was so determined to live to see Julian grow up that she knew she wasn't going to. She fought really hard and she said she was gonna at least make it to his third birthday. She died the day after. She had mentioned that if anything ever happens to me, you have to help Julian. And I feel true to what I told her. I am taking care of her son and raising him the right way, and I have no regrets. I adopted him once he was 10 so he could understand what was going on. But he's always been, I mean, he's my son. He's not a stepson or anything, you know? He's great. So were you going to make a quilt out of her clothing for her, her t son? T-shirts. <laughs> we just pulled all these t-shirts out because we didn't want to get rid of her clothes. The thought of yeah. wanting to do something like that yeah. means the absolute world to her. It means as if you actually did it. Mm -hmm. She's watching over him from heaven. She says, I want you to know that you exceeded every and any expectation that I ever would have had of you. Well, yeah. And that she's OK. I've always wanted that validation. She said that, you know, she thinks I'm doing a good job, and that's more important to me than anything. Just amazing. I want to go in her mind for a day. 